Hello, boys, girls, and MBs, and welcome back to a wonderful episode of the Judges Podcast. My name is John. My name is Erica. And my name is Christopher. And we, and we are, are the, the John Gs. <laughs> That's right. Here we are in beautiful, sunny Cold. Los Angeles, California. Nope. Oh, I'm sorry. Illinois. Mm. Close enough. Yeah, the opposite of Los Angeles. Correct. It's the other long state, guys. I would. California hmm. is long, right? It's tall. But like what? Tennessee is probably longer because it's thin. What? I feel like. When you look at California on a map, yeah. you go, wow, that's a long state compared yeah. to other states. I would not call it a tall state. Why? I mean, I understand why you're saying tall. Yeah, because it's tall Because he's this not way. tall. And he gets, he's got to like say other things are tall so that he okay. feels tall. Yeah, so like California is tall. So like in the grand scheme, we're all kind of short, right? It's actually called Tallifornia. Hmm. Yeah. I know that I know that Red Hot Chili Pepper song. Yeah. Yeah. Danny yeah. Tallifornia. <laughs> yeah. It's all yeah. about that Tallifornication. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Is that what you guys call it when you have sex is Tallifornication? <laughs> yes. How did you know that? Were you spying on us? The uh, fucking flea told me. What? He, he, let was, the, he swore to secrecy. Yeah, he let the flea out of the bag in a way. I was doing a, a write up on the plague today. So was, Just in general? Yeah. Why? Oh, somebody asked me to create a fact sheet about plague. Like bubonic or? Uh, actually, mnemonic. Mnemonic plague. Yeah. That's where it kind of sounds like it sounds. It makes it easier to remember. You do a little. <laughs> You do a little rhythm in your head to help you remember it. Yeah. The mnemonic plague. Like a mnemonic device. I understand what you're saying. Okay. But no, no. That was an infectious disease joke, technically. technically. You have to legally laugh. <laughs> I legally have to laugh at that. You're fired if you don't. You can't fire me. Your job's on the line, Erica. I don't give a shit. I'll quit all my jobs. And speaking wow. of Erica's job, I hear you got a little story for the oh pod. Oh my gosh. Okay. So, as y'all probably know, I am pregnant. Oh, <laughs> I'm at the stage in my pregnancy now that all of a sudden today I am starving at all times. Okay. And my coworker came up to bother me, as she does, um, as I was diligently working on a report about plague, for sure. I wasn't doing anything else. It seems weird that, I, we, we gotta take it back. It seems weird that you're saying plague and you're just like, you should all know which plague. <laughs> and then it was the wrong plague. It's not the wrong plague. Do you, you guys don't know what plague is then? It, correct. It's, is it a book? No. Pl the plague. Yes. Right? Yeah. It's the, more like a theater kind of thing. Right. It's like referring to like prince instead of like the prince. It's like I feel like it's two different things. Oh, no. So plague is caused by a bacteria called Yersinia pestis. Obviously, okay. we all knew that. You know what? Your sinny is a pestis. How about that? <laughs> That's very similar to the joke I made. Oh, I'm no, sorry. Oh, then say the joke quick. <laughs> we don't want to step on your toes no. here. So there's three different types of plague. It's not really a type. It's three different almost kind of stages. So one okay. kind of leads into the other, could potentially lead into the other. First stage is when you're bit by a flea or another. Um, usually fleas cause bubonic plague. So bubonic means that you have a swollen lymph node, right? Swollen lymph nodes. Okay. So bubonic infects your lymph, your lymphatic system. Okay. And then if left untreated, it can turn into septicemic. Okay. And that's, that's, that's in your bloodstream. Your, blood. your nose. Yeah. Yes. So that's when you start seeing like the lesions all over the body, the skin, like there's blood under your skin and into your organs and stuff where it's not supposed to be. Your skin right. turns black, dies, sloughs off. <laughs> okay. And then if that's, Left, you know, if somebody's not getting treated, then listen. You asked me. No, no, no. I just, I just joke. hate the phrase "sloughs off." Oh, yeah, for sure. Well, anyway, so if you left untreated again, you can cough up some infected droplets. Get slough off some droplets, and then if somebody around you inhales those droplets, mm -hmm. then you get pneumonic plague. Oh, because of lungs. Correct. Okay. Like pneumonia. Sure. And so the joke. Had nothing to do with plague. <laughs> oh. So anyway, I'm pregnant, right? And I'm hungry. And you're plagnant. My coworker comes up. She's gonna, you can cut all that about plague, to be honest. No. Okay. Never. Nobody wants to know about plague. Um, there are several cases of plague every for. year, just so everybody knows. 
it's not gone. Yeah, and they'll look out. And make sure you brush your teeth. You don't want plague buildup. That's plaque. Oh. Well, there's three stages of plaque. Yeah. I can't argue. I don't know shit about teeth. So, <laughs> and would you just let me get to my joke, please? I said this wasn't going to be enough for a circle jerk, and I feel like we're doing it right now. Oh, God damn. Anyway, she came over, and I said, this baby's making me hungry like I need a snack. And she goes, I can't fucking remember. Come on. <laughs> You're killing me. <laughs> she said, because my... Okay, so she she said you need a... A, a narsh? Okay. A narsha? Narsh something? And I was like, what the fuck is that? And she's like, you don't know what that is? And I was like, no. She's like, oh, it's a, it's just another word for snack. And I was like, what? Is it... Hang on. Is it a shorthand for nourishment? Maybe. A nourish? I don't know. She said, like, nosh, noshor, noshor, something like that. And she's like, you really don't know what that is? And I said, nah, sure don't. Okay, well, yeah, thank you. Amazing. Hey, that was great. Um, fantastic. <laughs> oh, really got me going. Erica, I do have to say that delivery, while it was good, was not expedited. Much like the shipping on this package that we're opening up in the mail time part of our podcast. First of all, you got me on a tangent about plague. Here, here I'm going to have to I, cut you off real quick, Erica. We've been running a real tangent in the last few episodes. I have a tight timeline I have to run on, so... Please open that package. Of course, anyway, we got sent this into our P.O. Box. That is P.O. Box 58 in Ottawa, Illinois, 61350. Address it to Erica only, or else she gets upset. I don't want the king cake. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, what's a king cake? It's Mardi Gras theme. Because it was perishable, we did pre-open it, but they have not seen the cards inside. I have. Um, it's a Kringle King Cake, so I'm assuming it's like a Wisconsin Kringle, which are delicious. This doesn't look like a Kringle, though. Oh, that's a King Cake. It says it right there. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you that don't know, there's a, a little tiny hidden baby somewhere inside this What's... cake. What? what? Yeah, that's the king in the cake. I thought the king was me, because I'm a short king. Happy Mardi Gras, everybody. Get them titties out. It's... It smells so good. Speaking of getting those kitty titties out, yeah, look at that. Oh, oh, oh the they baby's not in the cake. King's not in the cake. There's supposed to be a baby in the cake. It's hard to spoil it for you. No king in the cake. Um, celebra- it's the <laughs> king cake has its roots in the celebration of the birth of Christ. Well, um, <laughs> Christian. The oval. We don't cof- gotta worry about the king. The oval coffee cake tradition has a special gift baked baked inside to represent the gift of the Christ child. The so, Christian child? That's me. No, it says Christ Read the child. other one that has the note on it. You were asking we me care. about the baby. <laughs> what well, is your show? I'm let's on just a start tight over. schedule. Let's just start over. <laughs> I'm on a tight schedule. Can we get a note? Do you, do you want me to read the card or not? Yes. Yeah, we have one minute. Hello, this is part two of your gifts. We wanted to send you a hometown treat. Enjoy. P.S. Happy birthday, Chrissy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> Chaos. <laughs> I feel like I should put this on the ground in case Judah tries to come at any Just day. close the top. Oh. All right, we got 45 seconds. Josh, give them an, an intro on what we do on this podcast. Guys, we don't just make shit shows on this podcast. We also podcast on this podcast. And what that entails is going online and finding internet stories for us to laugh at and read at and judge at. And sometimes Christian does that. First story of the night, guys. I'm on a real tight schedule here, so we're really going to have to speed our way through it. But we are a little ahead of schedule, so i got to kill 20 oh, seconds. No. i got to kill 20 seconds. No. 15 more I'm seconds. I'm going to do my damnedest to get you so off schedule. I'm going to I'm gonna stall constantly. It's my personal goal this, this episode. All right. It's going to make us have to pivot already off of our first story. Here we go with our second story. Confessions. Are you serious? I like to creep around my home and act like a goblin. R slash confessions. R slash confessions. Okay. I like to creep around my house and act like a goblin. Did you really skip the first story? Yeah. Uh, this You were giving me goblin vibes, and so I'm going <laughs> to read my goblin story. I 
can't believe he just called his wife a goblin. Well, in a way. You felt the vibes you're giving off. That was goblin vibes through and through. Mm -hmm. Taking applicants for new husband or, wow. wi or wife. That's Same. fucked. I don't know why. So I'm trying to be. What's up? Trying to be goblin this <laughs> dick. Yeah, you're on a tight schedule. <laughs> you might as well skip this story. <laughs> the buttons were planned. <laughs> it's in the timeline. I don't know why, but I just enjoy doing this. Maybe it's my way of dealing with stress or something else. But I just do it about once every week. Generally, I'll carry around a sack and creep around <laughs> in a sort of crouch walking position, making goblin noises. I need an example of a goblin noise. Uh, <laughs> That's a cat. No, that's nah. a pretty good. I'm a goblin. <laughs> hey, get over here. It's as bad as, as He's like as kind of imagine. like New York gangster, yeah. but shorter. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'm a gambling. <laughs> I got my sack. Where do you find it? Like, I imagine a it's a canvas sack. sack. Where do you where do you find a burlap burlap, I guess would be the correct one. Where do you find a burlap sack nowadays? The novelty store. Where do I find a novelty store? <laughs> Goblin days? Town. Okay. That, you know what? You answered all my questions, guys. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Back to the story. Mm -hmm. Then I'll walk around my house and pick up various different trinkets and put them in my bag while saying stuff like, I'll be having that. <laughs> and laughing maniacally in my goblin voice. Trinkets can include anything from shit I find on the ground to cutlery or other utensils. How much I'm so glad they told us. This is just their way of cleaning up. I kind of like it. They're like cosplaying chores. Yeah. Okay. I can get behind that. You know what? That is cool. Yeah. Well, I didn't say cool. No, that's really <laughs> rad. We're definitely what we have never make fun of the person that submitted this, and no one on the podcast would submit two stories about themselves. Uh, the other day I was talking with my neighbors, and they mentioned hearing weird noises, like what I just wrote about. <laughs> And I was internally <laughs> screaming the entire conversation. I'm about 99% sure they don't know it's me, but God, that 1% chance is seriously weighing on my mind. How, so thin walls, right? Gotta be thin walls. Like, must be in or an apartment. Or he's just being real loud. <laughs> he's getting deep in the goblin mode. Sometimes the goblin takes over and I head outside and find little things in the yard. <laughs> You know, yeah. like my dog swallowed a quarter three months ago. And I'm like, hmm, that's for me. <laughs> it's like my own like personal savings account, but I don't accrue interest, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's like when you find a dollar in your pocket, and this you're... goblin finds a quarter and some shit. Okay. Sure. And yeah. the, the absolute joy when you find a, a mystery dollar in your pocket. Yeah. It's like you should have be mad. You lost that dollar for who knows how long, and you find it, and it makes your whole day. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. Especially if it's it? head side up when you find the dollar. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, we've all heard that. Yeah, that's a thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's a thing. Have you guys found money? Not in a long time. So this is one thing that the perks of being a dog walker has, and by okay. dog walker, I mean I walk my dog. Um. I have prop Judah specifically has sniffed out probably twenty eight dollars at least. Did like we'll just be him? walking and he'll just like pull towards the street and I look and there's just a fucking crisp fiver in the fucking gutter. Like legit, I've probably found like over twenty five dollars just from him like pulling towards cash. And what? how long of a time span? Like since you got him? Three years, four years. Okay, that's pretty good. Yeah, he's that's... almost paid for himself. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that is impressive. How much training did that require? Zero. I mean, did previous you have to get owners. Caesar Milan on the phone. <laughs> yeah, just hit. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, previous owner must have just been like a fucking goblin, like big goblin <laughs> energy. Just trying to train a little goblin dog. That but, makes sense. I found I have one memorable time finding money. I I found like like a hundred and forty dollars or something like that, and it was like almost cartoonish the way I found it. It was like. Every like ten feet, it was another like twenty dollar bill, and I'm just like, ooh, and I like look up, and I'm just like, whoa. <laughs> so I walk like, I was going to a friend's house, and it's like, it was like walking down their sidewalk, and I'm just like, whoop, 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 whoop. And, and then, then he wound like, up at a witch's house in the woods. Yeah. 
It could have happened. My goblin mode kicked in, all right? <laughs> Once goblin mode is in, the thing is they got real bad goblin vision, and you're just mm. narrow-minded. Yep. Easily distracted Yeah, by well, then, shiny things, especially if they're green. <laughs> yeah, and heads up. Then I had a moral dilemma of going into my friend's house and having to be like, do I ask him if it's his money? Oh, no. What? Absolutely fucking what are the not. Finders was keepers. He, was he walking to his own house from I, yours? No, well, no, but it's like, what if he what if he parked in the street for some reason? It was just a lot of money on the ground to just be like, hey, I found this like in your and your neighbor's house. Was it yard. my house? You fucker. <laughs> That's for that $140. That was my mom's birthday <laughs> present money. That's the money I used to train Judah to find cold hard cash. <laughs> and now, how do you guys feel about Julia Fox and Kanye's relationship ending because he wasn't accepting of her goblin mode? A very unfortunate. I don't know who she is. Uncut Joms. I mean, I I have seen and heard that 800,000 times. Yeah, she's an actress in the movie Uncut Gems. I've never seen the movie. Well, she also Neither goes goblin mode, and Kanye was not a fan, so, so they she, ended it. Are you saying she's a cold digger? No. I don't know. They had, a, they, had a, <laughs> they had to cut that relationship short. Just how we have to cut this story short so we can get to the next one so I, we don't run out I of time. We're on a t- no, we're on a tight a ship. There's a tight ship. Tell, you got, you got one minute and 12 seconds. One time in seventh grade, I found a little ball-sized purse, and it had pencils and stuff in it. I don't know how. It was a ball, but it also had $27 in it. And I gave it to the front office of the school. And every single day for a week, I came back and asked if somebody claimed it because they said after a week I could have it. And by the fourth day, the person was like, hey, you got to stop coming in here and asking. And I was like, okay. Came back on the seventh day and I got it. All 27 bones. Hey, man. Yes. Yes, dude. Yes. I love to hear it. Unfortunately, you told that story a little too fast. We got 40 <laughs> seconds to kill now. Just dead air. We'll just <laughs> fill it with dead air. <laughs> Don't worry. I get we'll we'll catch up with it on the back end of the podcast. Don't worry. It'll, it'll give us a little breathing room, you know. This is gonna be really hard for me to listen back to on one point five times speed because I feel like we're talking fast. Yeah, let's take okay. a chill you, pill. You want to slow down? Yeah, we got nineteen Christian's, seconds. No, Christian's mad maxing this episode, full blast. You pedal to the metal. You you're whole right, time, Erica. And it's giving me anxiety. We're fury road in this bitch. <sighs> I heard Tom Hardy was a real dick in that movie. Really? Yeah. Unfortunately, we don't have time to talk about that. Am I the <laughs> asshole for telling my son I was disappointed after he and his wife lied about my grandson's birth date? Yes. I'm going to go with yeah. I don't remember the full <laughs> title. <laughs> that was a long title. <laughs> Basically, Grandma is mad at her son for lying about her grandson's We don't have time for you to date. keep reading it, though. So like, no, let's I just got, get to the meeting. No, I got time allocated for this. I knew there was going to be questions about the title, <laughs> so I allocated time for it. Mm-hmm. Very nice vocabulary word. Is that what you want us to say? Is that what you were fishing for? I mean, he, I don't know if he's gotten a good word before. From you? No. Like, you know how you and I compliment each other on big words? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think he's said one. <clears throat> <laughs> Today's your day, though, with allocated. I got... <laughs> Did anybody pay attention to what second code that was at so we can wait the appropriate 30 seconds so I can properly cut this and still have the mental tracker in my head? Are you editing this episode? Yeah, don't worry about it. My son, <laughs> I, I think so. Yes. My son, 23, and his wife just had a baby boy. Congratulations. We're going to have a baby boy. And everyone is overjoyed and excited. But there are some issues that have risen recently. While my da- daughter-in-law was pregnant, I suggested I host a welcome a welcome home party for my grandson right after she gets discharged from the hospital. Nope. That seems like a red flag, right? That's a bad idea. Who doesn't want to have a party the day they're leaving the hospital? At after their house. Birth? At their own home. Well, no, the, the mother was going to hold it for them. At their house, though, right? Ah, uh, yeah. Well, I made the arrangements and even... Oh, wait, at her house. I made the arrangements and even emptied a room for them to stay at. But for some reason, she was against it. She said that she would rather spend the first few weeks at home with her newborn. Yeah. Sure. Not only that, but she said no to the welcome party. Uh Uh-huh. My husband and I talked to my son, and he said, oh, we'll see. Mm Mm-mm. Bad husband. Divorce. Immediately divorce. Which which grandparent is it? Like, on the son's side? The day it's like the son's mom and dad? Okay. 
But just a couple of days ago, we found out that my daughter-in-law had given birth two weeks ago now, and no one knew about this. My nephew had to tell me, and I immediately called my son, and he confirmed it. He and his wife lied that he and his wife lied and then hid the date of the birth from the family. I told him that this was not acceptable. Lying just because they didn't want a welcoming party and love and support being given to them from our family? I told him that I was disappointed because for one, he ruined, he ruined our welcoming for our grandbaby. And also, I invited family members, and they were all rightfully disappointed as well. He said that it was his last resort after I kept pushing him and made him and his wife feel uncomfortable. But that was not appreciated because we're just trying. Okay, we're trying to be good. What tone indicators do they have on that for you to give that reaction? I don't know. <laughs> Slash H-I-A. That stands for hands in air. <laughs> uh, we just want to celebrate our new, a new family member in a proper manner. We had an argument and he ended the call upon saying, I ruined his joy for his newborn. My husband started texting him since he stopped replying to our phone calls. And now is threatening to block my nephew from tattling. Good. For tattling. But I think that my nephew was decent enough to inform the family. Otherwise, God knows how long my son and his wife were going to hide their son from us. I mean, just to keep us at arm's length? It can't be that much longer. Yeah. You can't be pregnant for much more than nine months without some questions being asked. I don't know if you know this, but 40 weeks is 10 months. Oh, That's why I said much longer, and I didn't know that. Okay. Hmm. Goblins can be <laughs> pregnant for much longer than 40 months. <clears throat> We've always been kind and welcoming to my daughter-in-law and her family. I don't know why she would do this and disrespect the family like that. On the other hand, some family, some family members see it as a justified action because we kept insisting on the party. Mm. P.S. Some folks, I'd appreciate it if you left my nephew out of this conflict because he's not a part of this. He literally is. <clears throat> a little snitch. How old is the nephew? I feel like there's an age range where tattling isn't a word anymore. Uh, Thankfully, they included that information. The nephew was 24. That's not tattling. That's ratting. Yeah. <laughs> He's a rat. <laughs> He's a goddamn rat. He's not a tattler. You better not catch him out on the fucking streets, all right? We're going to roll you, you little rat. I think it's absolutely perfectly fine for them to just be like, hey. We're not doing that. Clearly, the, the grandparents have boundary issues. Yeah. Uh -huh. I wonder why they had to fucking lie to what? their own yeah. parents. Yeah. They're just like. How does she not remember how, like, brutal childbirth can be mm -hmm. and being like, oh, no, I would love to have a party after that. Well, and maybe she likes it, you know, like, maybe she's just more extroverted and, and wants that attention. And when was this posted? Uh, it was posted four One months in ago. the future. Okay, so just a refresher for everybody that might have forgotten. We're still in a pandemic. Okay, That's yeah. true. And... I don't, I mean, we still have five months left in, in our pregnancy, so who knows how the state of the world will be then, um, but I still don't plan on having my entire extended family, plus Christian's extended family. And Josh's extended family. And Josh's extended family over to anyone's house to show off my literal newborn yeah. a day after coming home from the hospital. Absolutely fucking not. Newborn's notoriously strong immune systems. I mean, ours will, but <laughs> most newborns know. Yeah, I, especially not during a pandemic. Like, I don't care if you think it's over, it's not over. Yeah, we're mid pandy, absolutely. Yeah. Quit calling it pandy. Oh my God. What would you call it then? That's, pandemic. That's, like, that's a mouthful. Like, allocate? That's a good word. <laughs> I should have gotten credit for it. I don't know if we gave me the proper credit, but I should <laughs> have gotten. Editor, can you uh, play it back for <laughs> That's going to fuck up the timing. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it's funny. Like, I I mean, there's many reasons why you wouldn't, including, like, health and safety of the kid or just mm -hmm. time off or your mental health. But also, like, she probably didn't have time to go full goblin mode and to clean up the house. <laughs> Shut up. I'm on paternity, maternity leave. I couldn't go goblin mode. <laughs> I can't go goblin mode with this little stinker behind there's me. trinkets everywhere on my floor. The baby's the ultimate <laughs> trinket. <laughs> just throwing the baby in the in burlap sack. sack. <laughs> Get in there, Joseph. Got a burlap baby Bjorn. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, I think that, no, that story is absolutely fucked. That woman sucks. Yeah. And I hope that, I hope she realizes by posting it on the internet for strangers to judge her, I hope she realizes she's a piece of shit. Yeah. I'm really hoping it's fake because it's like, how are you this oblivious? Yeah. Uh, and how is no one putting like a, a damper on your parade here to just like think this was a cool idea? Yes. And every single relative that was like, yeah, I want to, I mean, I understand you want to see the baby, but the fact that you're like, yep, we're going to have an, a fucking blowout picnic party literally the day after this baby's born. If you're an asshole too. Fuck you. Let yeah. this let these parents enjoy the first couple weeks of their their newborn and adjust to their life. Mm. Yeah, especially if it's their first kid, they don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're just trying to keep this baby alive. How many days post birth can I see the little shit? Um, you're supposed to be in the delivery room. Didn't That's we fair. Tell you that you have to hold my hand. How am I going to make it through this, Josh? <laughs> Christians in stirrups, just because. <laughs> He's been eating like shit. His bowels are a mess. He's not looking great. I'm so bloated. <laughs> he needs an epidural because, man, it's getting nasty down there. Well, my mom's going to be pissed when she hears that because I told her she couldn't be in the delivery room. Well, she can't. <laughs> well, She'll technically, go full goblin I can mode in only this. have one support person with yeah. me. Is that because of Pandy or because? Yeah. Okay. But I mean, Josh would be my one support person. Yeah. I'd be yours. Like, so you guys both get a plus one to the delivery room. <laughs> Yeah, I thought that, that's how that works, yeah. right? I mean... Just put on a mustache and act like you're the doctor. Different mustache. <laughs> that's that's what's going to make you look like a doctor, is a mustache. A second mustache. Yeah, show up in exactly what you're wearing. Yeah. They're going to be like, this And I'll just dude's stand like this. No gloves, but just... <laughs> yeah, I'm don't scrubbed touch in. me, I'm sterile. Yeah, I am you're sterile, scrubbed so in. you're waiting to get yeah. donned. Yeah. Donned? Yes. Yeah. I thought you said dawned because that well, point, that's what I, it I is. I would have already been dawned. That's the dish soap because famously, no, that hospitals use dish soap for their hand. Incorrect. Now, I've worked at a hospital <laughs> and they do donning and doffing your PPE. <clears throat> donning. Donning. You're saying dawn. I, think I am not saying dawn. There's I, no W. It's donning. I think, don. I think we just say it like Midwesterners. Donning. I think don is more Midwestern, like don. I think we're hitting the like the A of it, like the uh. There's no A in Don. There's not. But how are you saying? You say it. Donning. Don. Yeah. Well, because you're thinking <laughs> Donning. You keep thinking she's saying Don. I'm not saying Don. I'm saying Donning. <laughs> Guys. <laughs> how do you I, say I would, Donning and Doffing? I would like to Doff off of this story, but we don't. We're not on schedule. <laughs> so. Also, Doff is not a word. Yes, it is. Fucked off with that shit. <laughs> I've never heard that. I am literally a safety Wait. personnel at my work. Uh, then you're shit at your I've, job. I've only heard about donning, you not are, doffing. Have you never read the Dungeon Master Guide to 5th Edition Dungeons and Dragons? It Aww. takes it takes 10 minutes to doff your armor. Fucking fake you, if you wear heavy thought, armor and you have to it takes 10 minutes to doff it. I thought that was just shorthand for tick off. And I think it takes a full hour to don your armor. An hour? Something like that. God How damn. does it take 10 minutes to take off? But it's now some, to... I don't know. I don't remember. Hey, don't. D&D nerds don't even <laughs> fucking get at me. PPE nerds? Get at this man for not knowing what doffing means. You call yourself a, a safety person. Officer? I do. <laughs> hey, I got you. Boo. Okay. <laughs> good call because we only got 20. We got 40 seconds left in this half. So good call throwing that. Don't want to waste your top half carrot. Can't take it home with you. you. That's because he broke the top half of my carrot off. I do just before we go to break, I want to know, do we curse OP's entire lineage uh, for how they're acting? Do we curse of them in their entire Except lineage? Except for her baby. son. Yeah. Well, Except the for the grandson. Son. Correct. The but son we, and the grandson, the new baby, we don't curse them. We so just the else. male lineage. The yeah. female lineage, well, yeah. Well, they get cursed with anyone the that, pain of childbirth. Is that what it was with Adam and Eve? We got nine minutes. Um, you gotta go, actually. Can, can I also really say that you the four seconds. top end carrot is the worst spinoff of Carrot Top? We'll see you <laughs> on the it. back half. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to this side of the break. Way less anxiety over here. Erica's got the carrot. We've all calmed down a bit. I mean, there's really only one person who needed to calm down, but...
Well, Goblin Boy over here. <laughs> um, how's the audio on the auxiliary input? Because uh, it was playing and it wasn't playing. Uh, well, I don't have it plugged in yet. Ah, okay, okay, cool. I guess we I don't need just, it yet. That yeah, makes sense. I was sense. just getting you prepared. Hey, it's prepped. Our, our, our listener submission audio from Scaman on Instagram, it's ready. It's, it's prepped and it's ready to go. Just like this audio ba-da, drop ba-da, here. Ba-da, ba-da, wow. Circle Jerk. From Emo Joseph. We love it. Go stream mostly dead. Follow him on Instagram and TikTok. And Twitter. So on the back half of our podcast, we like to do a little thing called Circle Jerk. And we jerk around the circle. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And this week, we're taking it back to an old classic of Hurt Turks. Ooh. We're doing Hurt Turks on the Circle Jerge? I found a website called uh, Obsev, O-B-S-E-V, Obsev. And they had okay. 25 of the internet's hottest takes. Okay. Ooh. And so we get to judge Hurt Turks. Yeah. I like that. Erica, we're, thoughts? Well, I mean, we'll hear what the Hurt Turk is. And then we judge each other. Agree on or our... disagree. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And Got leave it. down in the comments below if you agree or disagree. Oh, that was her. my goblin coming out. <laughs> so fucking late. I don't know why this is my goblin pose. <laughs> Kanye West would hate it. Um, First hot take we have here is bacon's not that great. Uh, bacon like... in the entire culture that celebrates it, it's awful. Well, I agree. I think bacon's fine. It's not worth the effort or smell. Yeah. I feel like I don't think it's awful. I think bacon's pretty good. But I agree that the culture around bacon. Like the the 2011 bacon. Yeah. Like. Oh, yeah. Craze. Yeah. Get it out of here. Um, also, vegan bacon. Is Get it out of here. Easier to cook and it tastes the same because it's just. You know, really? Yeah. Turkey bacon's pretty good, too. Yeah. I was not expecting that. I mean, it doesn't have the same texture. It looks like a bacon strip, but... Okay. Ew. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like bacon... It's good if you have it, like, three times a year. Yeah. And once you pass that threshold, it's like, ugh. It gets you know, a I... Gross. And this is going to be a, a hot take in, in your eyes, because I don't give a shit about bacon on burgers. I don't... No, I don't either. You literally every single order you have of a cheeseburger has bacon i only do that from culver's okay culver's is the only place that nails it (laughs) it's like 90 percent of our orders for burgers is culver's Culver's. does culver's do good bacon usually like it's good for fast food bacon okay and that's just the burger that was on the menu yeah that i liked and now i just order it every time because i (laughs) you don't like don't change. change yeah uh next hot take we have here is Small children should cost more to have travel with you. Fuck that. No, that's fucking stupid as shit. Why? That's such a selfish, dumb thing. Well, if we're going to assume that all these are serious takes, it's the dumbest fucking take. But they're... Have you ever had to deal with a whiny, snot-nosed brat? Not personally. Hmm, then you wouldn't know how this feels. But that's I wouldn't, because you're the youngest sibling. I wouldn't feel better if I got charged more for bringing on a tyke, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, the writer writes here, have you ever had to share a plane with a child from the age of 2 to 12? Yeah. It's an actual nightmare. They're restless, they're loud, and their parents never just seem to have any control over them. And how is it that they take up more space than three grown adults combined, Joshua? They don't. <laughs> like, what? Also, how is how is charging them more affecting you? It would theoretically have less kids on flights because yeah. people don't want to pony up the cash yeah. to get Jonathan on the kids fucking are already flight. fucking expensive enough. Like, yeah. can we? That's why I'm saying it's a very privileged take. Here. Well, here's the, Eric. If you want to have a child, you should be able to afford a private jet. That's the thing. That should be the like the bar. You know, a little late for that. Can I? I got the PJ on order already. <laughs> I got the JP PJ ordered. It's Joji's podcast, Private Jet. Oh my god, the branding is immaculate. <laughs> we have to get it now. It'd be silly for us to not get it. It's a business expense. I think we can write it off and it'll be like, we're at a loss for the next, I don't know, 10 years. You know you can timeshare a private jet. That, hang on. That sounds like a bad idea. That's a poor mentality. I mean, all timeshares are bad ideas. <clears throat> uh, I l- Middle ground? Can we meet in the middle ground and say maybe there just, should be a, like, you know, economy first class children section of the plane. Okay. Yeah, no, that... Have, like, a clown back there with the no. curtains. Ball pit? I will never get on another plane again if there's a clown. Ball but pit it's just in the, the kids' section. 
Yeah. I'm going to have a child. Well, you don't go back oh, yeah, there with them. It's kids only. With the backwards You kind of just kick them in. You kick think them in. that I'm going to trust any clown, at, well, ever, any clown for any reason, but with my child? He's not caring for him. No. Okay. Then what's he doing there? Being creepy. Entertaining. Being creepy. <laughs> I'm not caring for them. They're just entertaining them. Is, do I have time for a tangent? Uh, I mean, how long? We got... It's a quick one. Okay, yeah. My mother lives next to a funeral home. So, so he's a mortician and he's a clown on the weekends. Hey, That's, everybody deals with trauma different ways. Isn't that terrifying? That's a nightmare. It's terrifying. Imagine showing up in the wrong outfit. Like, that's a classic sitcom ruse. Like... <laughs> Funeral today. I thought it was Tommy's birthday. Uh, uh. He um followed me around at a a fair once in his little <laughs> car, and I'm scared of clowns. And I told him to fuck off, uh, but I was like a little kid, so me telling an adult man to fuck off was not approved of. I don't care. He left me alone after. He did that. the little flower squirter, but it was soap in your mouth to wash your mouth out after <laughs> cursing at him. He donned you. Could you imagine how cool it would be to go goblin mode in a in a funeral home? What the hell? <laughs> Think of how many trinkets are just laying All around on trinkets. people's wrists. Yeah, like you th- know how fun it'd be to like, ooh, goblin mode, and like you're picking in dead people's pockets. You're, I'm glad- you're sticking quarters in their pockets. You're taking a hundred dollar <laughs> no. bills face up out of their pockets. Next hot take. I okay. I'm glad Gra- that one wasn't a hot take. Grandma Linda's getting buried in a nice watch. Just snatch that out. She doesn't need to tell time in the ground. We Clutch them have pearls. Grandma Linda. Pick a different name. Uh, Grandma Josephine. Is do you have a Grandma Josephine? I mean, no, that's but that's what we, we were gonna name our kid if it was a girl. Grandma Jacqueline. All right. Because I'll be Jacqueline all our watches. Ooh. Boo. ASMR videos are an annoying AF. Uh, that's not a hot take. It's like, a personal opinion. <laughs> like when did these become a thing? One second Instagrams to. Instagram's explore page is filled with terrible memes and dad jokes. And then the next minute, it's just all this slime. Then get off Instagram. Slime. Slime and soft sounds. And people trying desperately to get likes based on relaxation responses, but mostly just slime. (laughs) So you have a problem with slime. The S in ASMR is not slime. What does it stand for? Uh, Sano something. Audio Sano something. It's like the response. It's like the tingles you get from ASMR. You know what my favorite ASMR sounds are? Back cracking and knuckle cracking, uh-uh. joint cracking. A horrible take. The cracking of leaves under crunchy leaves under your feet. That's a much hotter take than saying ASMR is bad. I feel like most people don't like ASMR. Yeah. You know what else ASMR I like? Hmm. Pimple popping. A horrible. When you can hear it. Stop just... while you're oh. stop while you're behind. <laughs> Next hot take, skipping breakfast is fine and healthy even. I wouldn't say it's healthy, but I think I it's... I also would say that's like a mild, lukewarm... Yeah. Take. I haven't ate a consistent breakfast my entire yeah. life. I do. Same. But Like, even in, like, school, I didn't eat breakfast. I was just like, I don't eat, I don't eat breakfast, dog. I didn't have time for breakfast because yeah. I had to get my little sister ready for school. And that was a fucking chore in itself. I believe it. She was the true goblin of this story. <laughs> Her little trinkets were my Just tears. Closes book sack and <laughs> pushes off the table. <laughs> yes. Not everyone requires a whole three solid meals a day. And there's no proof that people who eat breakfast are any better off than those who don't. And while uh, we're at it, that's got to be refutable. Turning a bag of popcorn into a meal is okay too, but not necessarily <laughs> recommended on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. Which I don't get where that's coming from. I don't know where the popcorn's coming from. Somebody clearly shamed them. Well, they take because it, it's okay. It's like cornmeal, like cornflakes and shit, right? What is that? What is that? What the popcorn's coming from? Where's the popcorn coming from? They I just like skinny pop. Oh. This person's an intermittent faster. And I think she needs this to... This person has a, an eating disorder, I think. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to eat breakfast. I'm just... I agree with that statement. I mean, you don't need to shame somebody for eating breakfast. Just leave people in their food habits alone. You don't shame them, but you do bully them and give them a complex for their entire life, you know? I do know. 
People who aren't friends with their exes aren't worth dating. Wow. That now that's a hot take. That's a hot take. That one is a hot take. I don't think I don't think you need you can read the little thing. <laughs> it's gonna be like honestly, it shows maturity that they can talk to their ex and still remain civil. And while we're at it, I think you should fuck your ex every now and then. Get a tattoo with them even. <laughs> I don't know how I lost the picture. Sauce. This is very unfortunate, guys. This is gonna fuck up everything. I'll I'll riff. I'll I'll vamp here. Uh, I think it's weird that you. I don't think it's bad if somebody is potentially friends with their exes, mm -hmm. but I wouldn't state that as a requirement to date them. Agreed. It's also fine if you don't talk to your ex. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, I mean, they're. For the most part, they're an ex for a reason. There's, yeah, that's true. There's plenty of toxic relationships that you should probably just cut ties up with altogether. Yeah. Breakups are tricky, but if things end on fairly copaceptic terms, there's no reason two people shouldn't be able to re remain friendly with each other. This person just found out the word copaceptic and needed a way to push it on the internet. We uh, just talked about this last night. We did, night. but you're both pronouncing it wrong. It's copacetic, not septic. <laughs> I was just repeating. I've never heard the goddamn word. Before. I've heard it before, You've and I don't know how to read it. Never heard the song by Local it. H. Oh, you don't know a small band Local H? They had that one hit that's got the word copacetic in it. I sincerely doubt I have heard it. Google it. If someone feels the need to completely cough an X for no good reason, then they're too immature to be in a relationship with someone new, anyways. <laughs> Yeah, that's a hot take. This I don't agree with that. Just got broken up with, and they're like, "No, it's actually fine to have friends with exes." And uh, we got another good one here. Family recipes aren't always good recipes. Okay. Okay. That's fair. Also, not a hot take. Just no. because your grandma's grandmother used to make six bean casserole every Sunday night doesn't mean that six bean casserole is any good. It's probably terrible, actually, and no one is interested in is interested in it outside of your immediate family. This person went to a Super Bowl party with the seven layer bean dip and got pissed about it. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody's fucking <laughs> raving about the six bean casserole. <laughs> no one's even bringing up my seven layer bean dip. Are you fucking kidding There's me? There's one more layer. Less beans to be sure. On Super Bowl Sunday, nonetheless, the biggest day of the year, the biggest marketing day of the year, and you're gonna you're gonna talk about my product poorly in front of all my friends and family. I'm pissed. We're running out of time. I got a lot left here, so we're gonna have to kind of go to speed. W were you planning here. on doing all twenty five? No, I I weeded out the bad ones. Okay, cool. <laughs> oh, but we only great got. Job. <laughs> You have. I've but we, only, we only have a minute 30 left, so we're going to have to go just one speed more. round. Uh, Friends isn't a good show. Okay, fine. The Fair. Beatles are terrible. Nope, bad, that's incorrect. Very influential. Special moment videos are fucking obnoxious. What does that mean? I think uh, it's like, like... Military personnel coming home? Yeah, and like... Uh, like dad see, sees new baby for the first time. Just like, don't watch them. It's easy. Wow. We're speed running. <laughs> Keep going. Shit. Emotional support animals aren't service animals. Yes, they uh, are. Incorrect. That's just ableist. That's not a hot take. See, I thought the same thing. Yeah. I I cut this one off the list, but one is like, um, you're, I can't remember exactly how they said it, but it's like, if you have an impairment, that's not a personality trait. It's like, why is this on the list? <laughs> this is an important one. Wreck it, Ralph is better than brave. Okay. We're gonna say we're gonna say it. I've never seen. Wreck we it want Ralph. it to be heard. Wreck I've It Ralph's seen, better than Brave. I've seen Brave. It's pretty good. Has I've anybody? Seen seen, have you seen Wreck It Ralph? No. Have you seen Brave? Yeah. I fell asleep during it. We've all seen Brave, but not Wreck It Ralph. Interesting. What does Would that say about society? It's just it just <laughs> goes to show good marketing because like I I would have never been caught dead watching Wreck It Ralph, but can I saw Brave. Can I get a bless you? You didn't bless sneeze. you. We I got, did. We got ten seconds. Uh. Uh, Frozen is dog shit. Wrong. No, it's a fine movie. Just because it's popular doesn't mean it's bad. And uh, finally here, we have Hawaiian pizza fucks, dude. Correct. As it absolutely it's good? fucks. Yeah, yeah, fucks is good here. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, that's a good point. 
unfortunately, we're gonna have to cut those laughs short. Uh, we're running, we're running over a little bit. Wait, we're, so we are cutting? We're, uh, no, guys. Uh, if you want to send in a listener submission, please send in a story to judgespod at gmail com or Instagram at judgespod or send us in a listener submission. To sound like Ska Man did over on Instagram. He went full goblin mode. And send in this sound. Thank you. Erica didn't like inside that much. There isn't much more to say about it. Boys really liked it, but she didn't take. They really thought she would get something out of it. Everyone's different. Some just prefer jokes with farts or poo. Submission time Finish the circle Judge everyone's feeling fine Judges They're going at it Christian, Eric, and Joshua Tell them about it He just called me Eric? I think so Absolutely wonderful Crushed That was it. incredible Until you called me Eric That's That's a that's We don't do that name here Fair enough my that was thing. wonderful. Uh, very, very beautiful good. rendition of it was Bo Burnham's uh, inside outside. What's this? Uh, look who's inside. Look who's on inside again. Calls himself a fan. Doesn't even know the name. Sorry, but it was absolutely wonderful. Thank you very much. It was great. Again, until you called me Eric, I'm offended. They had to fit it in, just like I have to fit in this listener submitted story. Hi, judges. I love Hi. your podcast so much. Thank I listen you. all the time. And legitimately can't stop laughing from beginning to end, as all good listeners do. Can't wait for you to hear this one. It's a shit show. <laughs> not at my story. Am I the asshole for not buying my mother-in-law dinner? I, 22 female, and my boyfriend, 26 male, decided to go to dinner tonight because I had a really bad day at work and didn't feel like I had the capacity to cook for my family tonight. It's fair. I let my mother-in-law know that it was that she is to fend for herself and that. The two of us are going out. She then asked, oh, well, what's for dinner? To which I replied, whatever you find, because I'm just buying for me and Dean. She didn't like this answer and started fake huffing and crying. I laughed a bit, and I took my attention away from her and started petting our dog. But that's when my boyfriend came downstairs, and my mother-in-law set in the motion of her attack. Sammy says that she won't buy dinner for me. She wants me to starve. <laughs> she complained, buy me dinner while you're out. Or, she, yeah, she complained, buy me dinner while you're out. And she went back to watching Netflix. So sure, my boyfriend would say, yes, mommy. Fucking baby, little mama's little boy. mama's boy. Uh, and then he would say yes to mommy, and then like. <laughs> <laughs> no, Dean said sternly. We literally took you to get pastries last night. We got you a Kringle last night. Does it actually say Kringle? No. No, it says King Cake. Uh, we took you for pastries last night, bought you dinner for a whole week last week because you had COVID and refused to eat Sammy's cooking. Took you for pastries sounds like a baker's way of saying they offed someone. <laughs> like yeah. swimming with the fishes. Yeah, we took you for pastries last night. <laughs> uh... And we've literally been the only ones doing chores around the house for a whole month now. So take care of yourself. Dean's got a backbone. Hell yeah. My mother-in-law was fuming. She lifted her herself from the couch, stormed upstairs, and just before slamming her bedroom door, shouted, You can either buy me dinner or don't come back home. What? Dean and I looked at each other, sighed, and went on our way. Went to Olive Garden, by the way. And their fried mozzarella was fuego, fire, 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 fire uh, emoji. It's a little rude to go out and not get your mother-in-law dinner and you're still getting apps. Does that make sense? I could see that. Like, I, if it was a, a monetary little... thing and you're going to pay for a fucking $13 app at OG, I don't know. How do you know that they didn't eat the fried mozzarella as their dinner? Hmm. Yeah, Josh. Email them back right now. I am doing it right now. Hopefully we got enough time in the schedule here. We're running a little tight. Uh, on our way home, we stopped by Neater's and got her a chocolate dome in place of the dinner, and we had refused to buy her. 
I don't know what is that like a lava cake? What's a chocolate dome? I think that, that means, sounds fucking good. I think that's a baker's way of doing torture. They get a pot of hot <laughs> chocolate and pour it on them. Like, yeah, you like that, Donna? Okay. <laughs> that's such a good mother in law name. Well, his name's Dean. Dean and Donna. Donna and Dean. Mm. And she donna a hot chocolate <laughs> on her dome. <laughs> Suck. Uh, our dinner was already sixty dollars just for the two of us. Yeah, because you it's were appetizers. Our, I mean, yeah. As we walked in the door, there she is eating McDonald's. I was happy. Uh, she came to to her senses. I I figured at this point in the story she was homebound. <laughs> she can just go out and get McDonald's. I guess she got an Uber Eats it. I was happy she came to her senses until she twisted around and asked, you brought me dinner? No, we didn't, Donna. We brought you a <laughs> chocolate dome, though. Is that enough for you, Donna? Damn, Donna got that chocolate dome, though. I said this while handing it to her. Well, it's not dinner, but okay, she replied with a baby voice. Yucky. This annoyed me, and I went to my room. So I need to know, am I the asshole for not buying my mother-in-law dinner? No, your mother-in-law sounds like she fucking sucks. There's a lot of context here that's missing. Whose house is it? Does she have the authority to kick you out of it? Why is she requiring, like, could have just prefaced all of this. I, mean, I wouldn't say maybe you're the asshole, but like, could have prefaced all of this with like, hey, Dean and I are going on a date night. Yeah. So, you know, you that can really, cook for yourself. That or puts we, a kibosh on it pretty yeah. quick. But I also feel like, I mean, knowing that, like, they did all that stuff for her previously, mm -hmm. and it does not sound like she's very grateful for it. Mm. Um, the, with that being said, like, I definitely understand them not wanting to do anything for her. But also, how fucking hard is it to get a to-go meal? Like, Yeah, that's true. Especially like, with Olive Garden at this time, they got the $5 to-go entree. Come on. Yeah. But I also... But you know what? Don would probably ask, oh, I want extra chicken on it. That's an extra $5. I want a $10 yeah. to go. God. Donna. Yeah. And that shit adds up quick. <laughs> God. <Donna. laughs> so I get it why they didn't do it. But also, like, if she wasn't such an ungrateful bitch. Hey, she calling it like we it. see it. Okay. We, we call them like we see them. I'm, just I'm fully invested in the plot that these people are uh, bakery hitmen. <laughs> I think we need to write a script, a spec script of sorts. Get on it. You've got until next week's episode. All right, yeah, I'm Christian's all yeah, Christian's out of town all next week, so we I got plenty of time. time. We got enough time. Just enough time for one last story, guys. I'm glad. Is this the one that you skipped the first story? No, that was the uh, lying about the birth date. Oh, okay. Good. This story, it's kind of been a rage on the internet. We've been getting it sent in a lot to us, and so we have to discuss it. Yeah, but legally we have to. Sure. Yeah. And I know all, all of you dedicated listeners, you go, oh, wow, this is a Christian episode. And I made it 55, 53 minutes into this episode, and I didn't hear a single thing about shit. Well, here we have r slash true off my chest. Okay. I found out my husband is storing sealed jars of his diarrhea. Ah. What the fuck? Yes, this classic. It's a big internet story right now. Mm -hmm. When was it posted? Six days ago. Holy shit. I only found out about this a few hours ago, and I'm not sure how to deal with this. So any help or advice is appreciated. Uh, a divorce immediately. <laughs> the end story. Straight to jail. <laughs> Believe it or not, the divorce. <laughs> While cleaning out our kitchen cabinet or kitchen pantry, I, 24 female, uh -uh. was dusting the top shelf, which I can't see on top of, and noticed the clanging of jars up there. He put it in the pantry with the food. Uh, when he stores the jars of shit, that's he calls that dusting the top shelf, too, because a little bit of farts get on there. Boo. Here's the thing. I don't think you legally can uh, seal and jar your own diarrhea unless you have a dedicated jarring room in the basement. Mm. That's it the has to be separate from any other. Yeah. Yeah. And really, you should have a permit from the health department. Uh, also, proper storage should not be on the top shelf. Uh, yeah, shelf. honestly, wow. top shelf is just contamination. So okay. Wait, because of shit or because oh, of just food in general? Well, the shit can leak down onto everything below it. Okay. Correct. The same reason why you store chicken below any other type of meat. Okay. That's why, okay. Yeah. I was seeing the, I was trying to see the parallel to like actual food, not just like crazy that the health department has a thing on storing shit. No, no, no. 
<laughs> just in general, that's anything that leaks. Yeah. What if it was a real hard stool? Would you still need to go top with that? No, that anything stool related should be stored away from food. But if you've got to store it, double well, bag it. Loose stool related. Double bag it. Okay. Multiple containers, airtight, bottom shelf. All right, we got to rush through it now. I, I let you guys get on too far of a tangent. Are we trying to hit a, an hour? Yeah. So I got out the step ladder, and up there is 14 jars filled to the brim with diarrhea. 14. With sealed lids on them. Okay. It's a lot of diarrhea. Yeah. How often are you having How's diarrhea? Collecting have 14. It? Are we sure it's not just shit and it kind of breaks down over time? That's my thought. Sure. Like, especially if you're, like, storing it in water, it probably well, dissolve. I wouldn't say water. Probably vinegar. It's probably pickling as shit. Yeah. That, yeah. That makes sense, actually. Does it? Yeah. It's, he's fermenting it. The consistency in the jars For ranges... why? Reasons. The consistency in the jars ranges from brown water to thick black sludge, which was definitely not diarrhea, guys. Like a mixture of blended slugs. Oh, <laughs> gross. <laughs> and the jars are arranged in order from most watery to most viscous. Okay. A man of science. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, at least he's organized. I only know it's diary in the jars because I made the mistake of opening Why? one and the stench is unmistakably Why? the same as what he leaves behind in the bathroom. I might, I might, <laughs> I might actually throw up. Really? I'm not having a good time. I'm sorry. That's fucking gross. Oh my god. We really goofed up the timeline with this one, boys. That's fucking nasty. Yeah. <laughs> god, I'm struggling. <laughs> oh no, this is a judge's first. Here's my bathroom dresser ticket. It could just be random things. I need you to get off camera, Eric. Are you gonna throw up? <laughs> Why? I have to, you have to edit it out. I don't think you can show Just throw up on me. YouTube. Just cut to me. <laughs> I got like a few sentences left. Can you make it? Take the cans off. It probably is worse. I'm sweating. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking sweating. This is disgusting. The smell was bad. Just do opposite day for the rest of it. The smell was good, like rainbows. <laughs> I only live with my husband, and uh, he has IBS. Is that worse? I'm sorry. <laughs> IBSC, if you could believe it. <laughs> <laughs> do I do I tell him what I found? Do I just get rid of them? She hasn't even talked to him yet. <laughs> There's an update, but I don't know if Erica can handle it. Hey, next week we're coming back with the update. Oh, Erica's not gonna make it. <laughs> hey guys, we got two minutes to throw us out of here guys Ugh. thank you for watching if you want to see us on other platforms that's at judgy's pod erica you want to spell it oh j-u-d g-i-e-s pod and that's on twitter instagram tiktok uh twitch, twitch we're live streaming at least every wednesday and also on patreon where you can get bonus episodes one a month and get access to our discord where you can talk with other Judges fans, other piss babies in absolute goblin energy mode, Christian. And if you have a story about you finding sealed jars of anything on the top <laughs> shelf, send us in that story. And Kick that's Dams. That's at Judges Pod at or that's not at, it's Judges Pod at gmail.com. Now do you know exactly how long our outro sound is? Uh no, but it's our it's 20 20 seconds. seconds. Okay. Yeah, so this on top of our intro and then don't forget hey the judges love you we'll fix it in post we won't <laughs>now i'm gonna have to put in a fake one and a half second silence because i did the math wrong like i i i thought the pilk situation was gonna make me puke that story was so fucking vile. I only got halfway through it. <laughs>